Greetings. Well, if you say greetings, you almost imagine, I don't know, it to be followed by Earth dwellers or something. It's like, was there only ever aliens that said greetings, Earthlings? Well, I suppose they're greetings, Earthlings. It's going to be an alien, isn't it? Oh, look, I'm already started with a ramble. And just in case you would, this is my property clinic. This is a serious opportunity for you to ask serious property questions, which I can delve into my somewhat questionably large brain and uh, try and find the answers to. But often we go off on terrible tangents. And this is a classic example. We haven't even got into it. But anyway, greetings. Who says greetings? Well, me, obviously. But mm. anyway, greetings or hello, whatever. So this is your chance to ask me questions. We do Ask Martin Monday. Hashtag Ask Martin Monday. That's on a Monday. Oh, really? Oh, no, you're not kidding me. And that's on Twitter. Um, so you could do that anytime on a Monday. Just send me your questions in and I'll ask them, answer them on a Monday on a Twitter. Uh, sorry, Ask Martin Monday. Yeah, it's at TV Martin Roberts. And then we sort of do a roundup and compilation of some of the best ones or the most interesting ones or the ones that I can actually legally answer. Uh, here on my property clinic, which is on Martin Roberts Tidbits, property tidbits, um, do like, do subscribe and uh, set that belly thing, whatever it's called, um, reminder, bell, notification, the bell thing that just lets you know when I've done another one of this exciting, life-changing 20-minute rambles. Okie kokey, let's get on with it, shall we? Yes, Martin, you've been dribbling on long enough. Right, hi Martin, this is Paul James McCluskey. Is this current outbreak affecting the filming of the majority of your shows? Oh, yes, Aruni. Uh, there is no filming of Homes Under the Hammer. Obviously, it's a bit difficult to do interviews, socially distanced. Hello, how's the property what what are you gonna do with the property sorry yeah it's not gonna work so yeah and then well there's no auctions so uh, it's all a bit rubbish really but we are in the middle of filming uh series 25 and we had to stop obviously but we will hopefully resume when all this is moved on but most of the television production in this is in a right old mess i mean production of stuff and bear in mind that things take a while to filter through the system so you're seeing stuff now probably that was made a year ago not necessarily on homes and the hammer well actually maybe six months or a year ago but you know with other tv shows dramas it's like that it's like eesh. i mean i don't know how behind they are with things like eastenders and coronation street and stuff but uh so it'll filter through eventually and then it'll be oh my gosh it's the same for hollywood isn't it i guess the entertainment industry is not the most um the biggest one to worry about i suppose but it certainly affects me so no there is new filming right morning martin says ben speak sorry a recent episode with what could only be described as a very shiny glossy flooring almost like a paint bot had been thrown on the floor would be amazing to do a top 10 disaster successes show well Ben you know what we keep on saying let's do some compilations let's do like the best conversions or the top 10 houses by the sea or you know the the biggest renovations in Swindon by a bloke called Mike I mean we've done so many properties now over 3,000 I think we could just do all these lovely little compilations but for whatever reason then we don't uh we keep on telling or asking but we don't if you really want one just write to the bbc and says please that would be a really good idea they do actually listen sometimes right pete now as i said before this is an opportunity for you to have a gentle dig at me if you so desire um clearly completely obnoxious stuff i'm gonna totally ignore i'm gonna block you but um reasonably obnoxious stuff i won't so this is really and uh, hopefully as long as it's done with a kind of loving kind of like glint in the eye then ding this is Pete. Uh, he comes into the category. Um, Pete Mooring asks, when did you first start sporting your Sonic the Hedgehog hairstyle? Is it Sonic the Hedgehog? Do I look like Sonic the Hedgehog, really? Do I look like that? Do I really look like that? I mean, I don't think I'm blue or purple or whatever colour it is. No. Anyway, I'm quite touched. I quite like Sonic the Hedgehog. So, yeah. I've always had this haircut. And I'm hoping one day it'll come back in fashion. Uh, <laughs> right, Granny Rose. Serious property question. So people buying are deciding whether to redo electrics. What about if you're just living in a home? How do you know when you should be considering having your electrics renewed? Does it involve channeling out walls? Thank you. Well, the simple answer to that one is you need to speak to a qualified electrician. Electric electrics are one thing that, apart from very, very, very simple stuff, you cannot touch. You're not legally allowed to. A bit like doing gas, you mustn't do it. So you need to get an electrician in. And a good one will tell you realistically what you need to do. Now, as a rule of thumb, sort of 30 to 40 years is the kind of life expectancy of a, of a rewire, unless you've got mice or rats, which is going to be chomping through the cables before then. Tell you which, have you ever lost a hamster down the floorboards? I mean, they probably chew cables as well, don't they? Mm. I once lost my hamster into the cavity wall. And I tell you, it took a lot of hamster food to get the darn thing out. Because, you know, 
I didn't want to lose my hamster. I didn't my hamster. So Dad laid this little trail of hamster food, and um, woke up one morning it sort of come back in his cage. It's like a result. Or mm, now here's a thought. Not a very nice thought, to be honest. Maybe that wasn't my hamster. Maybe my parents did that thing, which probably parents do all the time, which is they substitute a pet for one that's, for whatever reason, not there anymore. You done that? Mm, young kids not going to notice. Your feeling looks like a hamster. A hamster. My hamster. I wish I hadn't thought about that. So I've always thought Hammy came back. Mm. Granny, I'm so sorry. I'm rambling so much on your answer. I Forgive me. Qualified electric will answer your questions. As long as it hasn't been chewed by a hamster. Don't go off on that side track. Then your electric will probably be good for 20, 30, 40 years. But your, your qualified electrician will tell you. They'll do tests. They'll certify it as being safe. If, if they do need to replace electrics, it's possible they'll be able to channel that down the walls. But the likelihood is you're going to have to channel the walls out. And sorry, I want to say channel that out a lot. You might be able to feed cables down the existing sort of like uh, channel thing. The likelihood is you're going to have to replace. So just, just yeah, it's a horrible job. Really horrible. Really. Anyway, oh, now here's an interesting fact about hamsters. Did you know that one pair of hamsters, if left alone in a house with enough food and bedding, presumably, and presumably soft by white music, left alone, one pair of hamsters could produce after one year. Okay, so they have babies, those babies have babies, and those babies' babies have babies. I'm assuming there's enough food, there's enough space, there's enough hamster bedding. How many hamsters do you think there will be left after a year? So let's say you went on holiday, you left a hamster at home, didn't realise, with his mate. How many? Guess. Well, I don't know where this figure comes from, but I'm reliably informed, left alone, producing hamsters, which would produce more hamsters, and then more hamsters, you would end up with 143,000 hamsters. No, really, 143,000. A lot of hamsters. Imagine you came home. Hello, dear. I'll just check the post. Yeah. Open the door. Whoa! Wall of hamsters. Yeah. Moving on. This is a question from Lee. Hello, Lee. I've always thought of asking you where you would say is the best place to live in the UK. You have visited nearly, if not everywhere in the UK. Best for value and nice location. Wow, that's a difficult question. We've got so many lovely places in the UK, haven't we? So many different parts that are just absolutely lovely. Um, I am a huge fan of Dorset and Devon. Go on holidays, Dorset, in the summer every year. Love Devon. There is a price to pay that though. Pro you know, obviously property in more sought after locations is more expensive. So you might get more for your money in less desirable areas, but it depends what you're after. Uh, and you know, the northeast coast is gorgeous. You've got some, you know, the Lake District coast, you know, I mean, we're so, uh, Wales, I mean, we are very lucky in the UK. So it's whatever floats your boat. Dan. Hey, Marty. Hello, Dan. Hope you and the family are well. Uh, you know, as well as people are at the moment, I guess. What's the longest time between first seeing a house and nothing being done to it on one show? Well, you know, it's disappointing, isn't it? When you go back, like, years later, and it's and the big build-up, da-da-da. We returned five years later, and nothing has happened. I know, I share your pain. You know what? These things happen. I think it is actually five years between filming and going back. Right, Jamie Broadley. Hello, Jamie. With an interest-only mortgage, any equity the property makes on the price you paid, would you make a profit on the difference once sold? You would. Bear in mind with interest-only mortgages, literally you are only paying the interest on the money borrowed. So that will not pay off the money that you have lent ever. So at some point, if it's a 20-year mortgage, after 20 years, somebody will say, can we have our money back now? That'll be 200,000 quid, please. So you're only paying the interest, okay? So the old-fashioned, as they were, mortgages, they're called repayment mortgages, where you paid the interest, but you also paid a little bit of the amount you borrowed. So by the end, you get 20 years, you don't owe anything. Okay, it's quite good at it. But they cost more as you go along. So a lot of people are drawn towards the short-term savings of an interest-only mortgage. So bear that in mind. Now, if you are flipping properties, as in buying them, then selling them on really soon, uh, interest-only mortgages can obviously work quite well for you. If it is your principal place of residence, you're living there, then if you buy a house, you do it up, you sell it, and you're not doing it in a super quick time, like, you know, you're not doing it every three months, but you've lived in there for a while, then you don't pay any tax on the difference you get in between the price you paid and the price that you sell for. That's all yours to keep. If, if it's not your principal place of residence, then you take off any costs you've incurred. So renovation costs, builders, you know, whatever it might be. And then whatever the difference is, the profit is taxable. Um, and that depends on your own personal circumstances. Obviously, you need to speak to an accountant or a financial advisor. I'm neither of those. So you can make a profit. It, it can be a good way to do it. It's one of the principles of property investing. It's a good thing. But speak to your um, accountant and a financial advisor to get proper good advice. Stevie Magic Bean RB. I wonder the fact he's put an RB on the end, like there's another Stevie Magic Bean. I don't know, just in case, so we can differentiate. And this particular Stevie Magic Bean. Hello, Marty. Hello. 
Stevie Magic being happy. Uh, I have a Victorian terrace and need extra room. Would you recommend a cellar or a loft conversion? Uh, Victorian terrace. Mm. So probably both of those things are definitely going to need building regulations. And the cellar probably doesn't need planning permission unless you're in a listed building. Loft conversions, again, you might be able to get away under permitted development, but you'll still need building regulations. But there are permitted development rules, which you can check out on your local authority planning website which will decide whether or not you can do that loft conversion without any uh, planning permission you will need to be building regulations as i said again i personally think a loft is going to be easier sellers are potentially fine if they don't need lots of excavations because that is largely manual work and also you've got to get rid of the stuff and you've got to be very very careful about digging away foundations so structural surveyor required for both of these but especially required for the cellar one because you don't want to get that wrong. You do not want to burrow under your house and have the house collapse all around you. That is not going to work. So I would probably say a loft is going to be your easiest option. And also lofts are light and airy. You can put dormers in them. You get views out the top. Probably most people would value a loft more. And if I had the option or they had the option, they'd probably put for a house which had a loft conversion rather than a cellar conversion. Would be my off the top of my head kind of answer to that one. Roseanne can we still get a mortgage promise at the moment well a mortgage promise probably based on you as in what you might be able to borrow based on your credit history and all that kind of stuff but in terms of on a property you know there are mortgage valuations being done by what they call from the book which is sort of like a yeah, what what the rough prices in the street are but in general it's all still on hold you know i think if you can just work on your personal um situation work on your credit rating and just to say there is i think called the property masterclass which is on this youtube channel my youtube channel but we do go into how you can make yourself more attractive as somebody or for somebody to lend to credit ratings and all that kind of stuff so uh, check that out if it isn't there yet uh, there is a module coming up uh, on the master class which will help you there Roseanne Andrew Hayward asks have you ever been or has there ever been a property revamp where you're jealous and would love to buy it and has there been a property that you would never ever touch who well I have to say people do amazing jobs um, and I'm really pleased for them. I'm not generally jealous. The properties we wouldn't touch, you know, most properties, if you can get them at the right price, are worth having a punt at. There have been a couple of occasions where their properties have been a bit spooky and just didn't feel good. If you want to see a hear a spooky story, go to property clinic number four. I tell a whole ghost story in that one. It's not a ghost story, it's a real story. So I wouldn't have bought that property. Ugh, no chance. So it generally ones you just get a bad feeling about. Martin, says David Banks. What infuriates you most about people on your show? With me, it's when they walk into a massive kitchen and say it's too small. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you're comparing the stuff you see, you know, to your house and you're living in an average sized house and somebody walks into a pretty big house and moan, moans about it, I can see why that would, uh, I can see that would uh, annoy you, David. I, you know what, it's the hammer golden rules. It's, it's buying a property without seeing it or buying a property without reading the legal pack. Those are the two big things which just, you know, I can just annoy me because it's not going to, it's not going to affect me, but I just don't want to put the wrong message out there to people that you, you can't do that. You've got to visit the property. You've got to read the legal pack. Pete Bavin asks, what are the rules? I have a medium sized outhouse, 30 foot by 20 foot, which I want to convert into a studio and rent out. Can I do this? Okay, Pete. Well, a lot of it depends on the, the existing size of your house because a lot of it's down to percentages. So if you're adding on a particularly large percentage of the size to the size of your existing house, then that is a bit of an issue. There are things called permitted development rules. It's like a fast track through planning. It basically means you don't have to get planning on certain conversions, single story conversions, single story extensions and all sorts of things. There are rules and there are particulars and you just need to look at your local planning authority website. It will give you all the information you need about permitted development what you can and can't do but a lot of people think if it's if you don't need planning permission that's it no well, yes that is it from planning point of view but um you need always to do things to building regulations approved standards so that's building them to be safely built and heat efficient and all that kind of stuff so don't think you can just get no approvals needed there are and also i think even though you might not need to get the approval of the neighbours um, if you don't need planning. I think it's always nice to try and sort of let them know what's going on. Um, try and keep your neighbours happy, definitely. Mel Wilson, do 
are you and the other presenters stay in touch when filming has ended? Well, not regularly, but yes, we do. We um, email each other and WhatsApp each other and text each other every now and again. I mean, I guess we see each other once every couple of months, every two months, which is slightly longer at the moment. But it's always nice to see them. And uh, yeah, always wish them well. So, anyway, in what circumstances are you unable to get a mortgage done on a house through your bank? I mean, are there certain properties you're unable to get a mortgage on, such as auction properties or land? Okay, so each lender will have a different set of criteria in terms of what they will lend on. Some want there to be a kitchen and a bathroom working. Others will be more flexible and you can get development mortgages and refurbishment mortgages. Each lender will definitely have their own criteria. There are definitely auction, oh, sorry, mortgage lenders though, who will lend on auction properties so the main thing you've got against you on an auction property is the amount of time because you really haven't got a lot of time so like six weeks from when the property is coming out in the in the auction catalogue and that's not a lot of time to engage with a mortgage company so start the process early on get yourself your own self approved as in you know your own credit rating so you can get a mortgage in principle based on you and then when you find a property you want see if you can get the valuers to go around during the marketing period and there's no reason why a mortgage company wouldn't lend on an auction property but they will all have specific criteria so you need to check that out check the small print and a good independent mortgage broker would be able to help you um with that Mick holds which part of a property would you look at prioritizing spending money on if you were looking to increase its value Kitchens and bathrooms every day of the week. We, I know I say it, and I say it flippantly, kitchens and bathrooms will, you will always get your money back. Unless you put in some stupidly expensive kitchen and some stupidly expensive bathroom, you will generally add at least the value that it's cost and make it hugely more saleable by doing kitchens up and doing bathrooms up. So stick to the basics. People will make their decisions, not on the bedrooms, not on the view, well, possibly, but mostly on the state of the kitchen and the bathroom. If they're nice, clean, tidy, new, then that's a real, real big bonus. Gillian Bennett, I used still co-presenting Homes and Hammer Lots and I keep looking for your smiley face and only seeing the others. Look, don't panic. The way it goes on the show, we should be each of us in each show, but because of practicalities of filming, sometimes some of Dion's properties or Martel's properties will finish before mine. So they go back to visit their properties or we go back to visit their properties and, and that project gets finished soon. And, and because of the practicalities of making a show that just has so many episodes on a regular basis, it's a bit of a conveyor belt. They, we have to put some of more of one presenter's properties in one show than another. And so don't panic. I'm not going away anytime soon. I hope. <laughs> That's what, oh no, touch wood. Ah. Why do you touch wood? I don't know, where's that come from? Does anyone know where touch wood comes from? Touch wood, why do we touch wood? It's something to do with it. Is it, is it probably pagan or something? You know, touching the forest, spirit of the forest and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, I love hugging trees, so anyway. Glandia um, Kumru writes, what's the worst house you've ever been in? Ooh, wow, it's always the ones where people have left their pets inside. Oh my gosh, the smell is absolutely terrible. You know, dogs or cats not allowed out, it impregnated the floorboards. Ugh, absolutely. Ugh. So it's always the smell. It's always the smell. <laughs> I'm telling you about the hammer golden rule we have. Filming rule, anyway. Never open the fridge. Never open a fridge. You see a fridge, don't open it. Don't open it. Don't open the fridge. No, 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 no. And a freezer. Ugh, even worse. Final question from Cara Price. Hi, Marty. Where can I get the same people who do a whole house up for, say, 6000 to do my kitchen, small, a galley, for less than the £10,000 I'm usually quoted? You know, it is annoying, isn't it? And I know it annoys people when they see it on Homes and the Hammer. And, and some people manage to do a whole house refurb for very little money. I guess, you know, it's about finding a team of builders who are very, very, very fair and good value for money. Now, a £10,000 kitchen might be a really, really nice, good quality, handmade kitchen, in which case it would be worth it. You can buy a kitchen for 500 quid. And in fact, if you look on the auction websites, Ebays and that kind of thing, you know, you, you p people are sell off often brand new display kitchens for virtually no money at all. So maybe that's something you can start with. Think, look online and see if you can find a cheap kitchen online uh, and then find somebody to fit it. So I could, totally, you could, you could, you should be able to get yourself a kitchen done for three grand, I would have thought, maybe four. You know, 1,500 quid to buy it, 500 quid for bits, and then 2,000 quid for something to fit it. Yeah, easy peasy. And a really nice one is that. Give it a go, Cara. So that's it. That's it for my property clinic for this week. Uh, do 
keep your questions coming in it's really lovely uh, to hear them ask marty monday is generally when we take them you can tweet me at tv martin roberts uh, with your question you can also ask your questions just down here on the comment section if you would rather make sure you like this endless stream of drivel and make sure you subscribe to the channel and set your little um, belly thing uh, to remind you that another video has been posted or when another video has been posted take care of yourself and uh, i'll be back with more uh, next time Thank <laughs> you.